afternoon again. I hope you're keeping well. I'm on my own today. I'm in Essex again. My home county, the greatest county in England. And I'm back doing some of these walks from the Essex Year Round Walks book. I've not really got too many of these done. So we're now into like early autumn. So I'm going to be doing some of the autumn walks. Well, all of them. <laughs> And today's one is Little Braxted, which is just outside of Whitton, which is just outside of Chelmsford, the county town of Essex. Never been to Little Braxted before. It's a tiny little place. Really, really picturesque. The weather's not great today. It's absolutely chucking it down. So I've got waterproofs with me and I'm filming this intro in the car, as I say, because of the rain outside at the moment. This walk's only two and a half miles, so it's a really short walk, but that's ideal, A, because of the rain, and B, because later on I'm going to meet up with Luke from The Real Traveling Amigos. He is doing his centenary circle walk to raise money for Chess Homeless Charity in Chelmsford. So in case you haven't seen my video of that, here's a link. And me and Luke had planned to do it together, but he got an ear infection, so he had to postpone his to this weekend. So I ended up doing it with a subscriber who was also called Tom. The donation page is still available for you to donate, by the way. I'm going to leave it up for probably another week. And the target is to get to a thousand pounds. So I'm up to 750. You can get it up to 800, that would be brilliant. I'll put links to that Just Giving page below this video. Now, this walk is the start of a few walks I'm going to be doing throughout October to raise money for another charity. I thought I'm going to start another fundraising project. It's motivating me at the moment. And I want to raise £100 via like, it's like a Facebook sort of donation thing. And I want to raise it for Macmillan Cancer Support. You know, the, the well-known Macmillan Cancer Charity. And they set up like a project for people to do 100 miles, whether it's walk, cycle or run, in October. And I thought, I'm going to give that a go. I could do that. It means walking regularly. But to be fair, that will give me the kick up the arse I need to get out and do a lot of walks and things like this so I thought why not so I've set that up on my Facebook account which is Tom Hill and I'll try and put a link below that this video as well and you know you can give what you can it's only a hundred pound I'm raising because I thought I've just done the chess fundraiser people aren't made of money <laughs> so yeah just give whatever you can honestly if you want to um, it'd be much appreciated. You know, cancer is one of those things. It affects so many people. It affects almost all of us in some way, shape, or form. My backstory, my reason for doing this is I've not. I don't think I've ever told anyone this on the channel, really. So I lost my dad when I was 13. He sadly died of cancer, and. We didn't, I don't think we really went through Macmillan Cancer Support, but I kind of wish we had, really. Yeah, I'm 33 now, so it would be 20 years um, since he passed. And I think he actually passed away. It feels bad I should know this, but he passed away, I think, in late September. I think it was a day or two before I did the Chelmsford Centenary Circle walk. So this is... It's almost like fate. This come along and I saw this on Facebook and I was like, I'm going to do that. You know, it just seems the right thing to do. 20 years gone, almost exact to the day. Let's do it. So that's that's why I'm, I'm doing it. Yeah, just see how it goes. I'm looking forward to it. I like a little challenge, so it's all good. There was a really nice mill back there. Um, I drove past it because I got lost trying to find the start point. <laughs> And we'll be seeing that later on. There's also a really nice church, a really cool little old church. And according to this guidebook inside, it's amazing. It's really cool. So I'm not going to tell you any more about that. You have to wait and see. You have to watch till the end of this video. 
uh, because we're heading off that way and the church and the mill and stuff is, is back that way and I'm not going to do it anti-clockwise, I'll do it the proper way so I've got a little cider that I'll probably crack out at some point on the walk right, I'm going to get the bag on me back enough talking, let's get walking! Boom! The main reason for doing this delightful short walk in the late autumn or early winter is the trees. Quite unusually for Essex, most of the fields we encounter here are lined with trees rather than hedges. Thus, when their leaves are gone, we are left with their fragile skeletons, which seem to have been crafted by artistic tree surgeons. The walk passes numerous lakes that are revealed when the leaves fall and the whole route is accompanied by the calls made by the flocks of birds that inhabit the water or the trees. We finish in the hamlet of Little Braxted with its enchanting combination of farm, hall, mill and church. We just had a bit of a freak downpour since the bridge so I had to put the, the phone away, the camera and I couldn't film anything for a bit you've not missed much really so, like that was through like a farm field and where all like the cows and sheep and stuff had walked through it it was just like a swamp you know just thick mud so I'd sort of go around that and some of the, the footpath footpath signs weren't very clear we're approaching a farm and a load of cows the phone the camera's not coping too well with the amount of water that's getting on it and stuff so i've sort of had to unplug it from the mic and uh, i've just got it on the phone cradle at the moment so and the wind's picked up as well literally Luke picked probably the worst day or the worst week to have an ear infection. <laughs> I'm going to say that now, mate, honestly. Oh, you should have done it last weekend when the weather was better. Um, like, I would not do the centenary circle in this weather. You know, I'd just about do two and a half miles in, in this weather, like, i.e. this walk. I think if I knew that the weather was going to be bad, for the centenary circle I would postpone it personally um, I was thinking that last week when he he had to sack it off because of his ear infection a few people said to me Tom why don't you postpone it to this weekend I'm glad I didn't listen to them people you know who you are I'm glad I didn't listen to you because there's no way I would want to do 24 miles in this weather for 14 and a half hours forget it um, Luke says at the moment he's walking he's been walking for like seven hours and he's already at like the east side of Gallywood like the southern point of the centenary circle that's absolutely mad I don't know how he's walked it that quick I said to him I went mate you must have not been filming a lot you must have filmed jack shit he went I've just filmed the important bits I thought what important bits there's hardly anything along the route really I mean there's there's some nice scenery and stuff but yeah, it's not a lot of touristy stuff or historic things to stop and grab your attention, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, no, I would not have picked a day to do it, definitely, but fair play to him. Keep going, mate, well done. He'll have, he'll have finished it by the time I've put this video out, of course, but yeah, we're just going past some, like, 
new barns and stuff at the moment nothing too exciting the best bit's going to be little Braxted though with the church and uh, the mill you wait till you see that <laughs> it looks pretty good when I drove past it We're at the church, the church that I've been keeping secret from you for a while. Look at that, that looks a bit different, doesn't it? So we're back at Little Braxted, the car is literally round the corner, but this is where all the cool stuff happens now. So let's go and have a look in the church. Hopefully it's open, there's a porch which is good, so I could sit in there out of the rain because the rain's got heavier again. wire gate to the porch of St Nicholas's Church is designed to stop birds entering the building. Push open the heavy door and be prepared to be amazed. One's first impression is that all the stone surfaces are cloaked in rich tapestry. It is only when your eyes become accustomed to the light that you realise that the effect is entirely the result of paint. The original church dates from the early 12th century when it was thought to be one of the smallest in the county. Over the years there have been several additions and alterations. The most extensive restoration was carried out in the mid 19th century. In 1881 Ernest Geldart, an accomplished artist, became rector. It was he who was responsible for all the paintings. God's house, Geldart wrote, ought to be the finest house and the most beautiful house in a parish and that is what he set out to create. His changes were not universally popular because they were accompanied by elaborate services with vestments, candles, incense, processions and other forms of ritual which for many people too closely followed Roman Catholic practice. There were letters of complaint in the press and even threats of prosecution but eventually there was acceptance. Now visitors come from all over the world to see his work. I'm just sat at the back of this little parish church here at Little Braxted and this is possibly, no it is, one of the best churches I've ever been in. This is absolutely incredible. Just the the decor is just amazing. To see like one wall painting in a church is amazing, but to see an entire church, literally every square inch of the walls, the archways, the columns, even like the door frame has got something on it. It is absolutely incredible the amount of history in this building and the amount of hard work that's gone into this both in creating it and restoring it is incredible it just blows my mind there's little cards laminated cards dotted all over the church that tell you the history about each individual thing like there's one about the font the like the rude screen the pulpit just there's stuff everywhere and i could spend i could probably spend a good hour or two in here reading everything and filming everything i could probably do a video on just this church alone this is only half an hour from me and i never knew this was here get in the comments right if you would like to see a video a detailed in-depth like video on just this church like the history of it and I'll go through everything as much as I can anyway let me know because I will come back and do that at some point I don't know when but I would do it if there's a demand for it I will do it this church deserves it it's incredible 
and I thought what fitting way as we're near the end of the walk to crack out the cider that I've bought. It's a little 330ml bottle, it's 4% and this one is Harry's Pink Rhubarb Still Cider, so it's not fizzy. It's made in Somerset, you know how much I love a rhubarb cider. Apologies the lighting's not great in here, even with my camera light on it just seems to be sort of washing any detail out. Now I will confess I've had one of these before. We're going to review it here now. I remember though that I did like it. If it's a rhubarb cider, nine times out of ten I'll like it. It's from Gary the Groomer again. Cheers mate. Screw top lid. I've got quite a few people and things to dedicate this one to. I mean I feel like I should dedicate this one to this church and everyone that's involved in looking after it. I think it's absolutely incredible. And of course, seeing as this is my first walk that I'm doing to uh, help raise money for Macmillan Cancer, it's my first sort of walk of the 100 miles that I'm planning on doing in October, I've got to dedicate it to Macmillan Cancer Charity. They're absolutely brilliant. They do some amazing work. You probably already know the amazing work they do, but just look them up if you're not aware. And to everyone you know that unfortunately has cancer, has passed away from cancer, who's going through it at the moment, their friends, family that are going through it with them, because you don't suffer alone. Um, this is for you guys. Cheers. Oh, that's nice. It's so good it doesn't taste alcoholic. That's amazing. It's a small bottle. I'm, I'm just going to drink that on camera now. That's brilliant. At least a 9 out of 10. I like that it's still, it's, it's just basically like having a, a little glass of fruit juice in the morning. It's just like that. It, I could drink that. <laughs> I could just drink one of those every morning. <laughs> that's, that's so addictive. That is incredible. It's up there with Lily's Rhubarb Cider, Rosie's Pig Flat Tire Rhubarb Cider, and this, I put this up there as well, for Rhubarb Ciders. For me, like a Rhubarb Cider gets at least an eight straight away, just Rhubarb Cider, I've, I've found the flavor that I am obsessed with. This is so nice, it's so easy to drink. I'm giving it a 9.8 out of 10. I'm just going to go there. 9.8, it's brilliant. This is the highlight of the walk, this church, hands down. Mm. There you go, 9.8 out of 10 for Harry's Made in Somerset Pink Rhubarb Still Cider. Cheers, Gary. You are one of a kind, my friend. Thank you very much. Just heading over the River Blackwater and the bridge just leaving Little Braxted. Rain's getting heavier again now. That's all right because I'm back at my car. This coat, by the way, this OEX cooling pulling jacket, I don't know, uh, I think I paid about 40 quid for it, um, probably best for like showers really, like prolonged rain or heavy rain, this is sort of, I'd say getting onto heavy rain, it's not great for, um, I took it off in the church and the sleeves felt like sort of wet inside so I think it has let some water in, 
uh, my fleece underneath is a little bit wet so yeah I've still got my uh, crag hoppers jacket that I bought on the Canterbury loop of the North Downs way so that might be a bit better but to be honest with you I think I'm gonna have to go with something like a heavy Gore-Tex jacket um, and yeah apparently they're brilliant they don't let a single drop in so we'll see but yeah good thing this walk was only two two and a half miles <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it thank you for joining me on this one it's been brilliant despite the weather I'm sure this place is lovely whatever the weather any time of the year I'm gonna you know keep doing some walks throughout October and aim to do a hundred miles in the month to raise money for Macmillan Cancer charity so head over to my Facebook page I think it's Tom Hill H R W L. -L. Um, there's a picture of me at a North Downs Way milestone that's how you can tell it's me um, and I think it says somewhere that it's Tom Outdoors so and there's a fundraiser on there I'm aiming to raise a hundred pound so you know if you want to donate just give what you can you haven't got to give loads whatever honestly it's it's all greatly appreciated thank you so much um and you know i'm a man of my word i will do it i will do it if i have to get on a treadmill at work and do a few miles on that i will do and i'll film it as proof that i've done it won't be as interesting of course um i could read from a history book or something to give you the history content but i doubt they're going to let me have a cider <laughs> in the gym while i'm walking so we'll see anyway but nah i'll do my best to get out and do some actual walks anyways until next time take care of yourselves everyone stay safe look after each other be nice to each other i'll see you soon cheers bye let's go and find luke